Hey everyone, my name is Adriana Valencia. I am a registered dietitian and certified diabetes educator. Today, my topic is holiday cooking everyone can feast on. What we're gonna be doing is just kind of reviewing some ways to keep on track with your healthy eating for the holiday time and just kind of review some kind of recipe ideas as well. Thanks for listening in. So first I wanna start off with a question. How many pounds do you think the average American gains during the holiday time? So the answer is about one to three pounds. Now, most, so there was a study conducted by the New England Journal of Medicine, and um, they found that the average weight gain was about one to three pounds, but most people seem to think that the weight gain is about five pounds. So I tell you the statistic not to increase anxiety, my hope would be that this would help reduce the amount of anxiety that you feel regarding this holiday time and um, any waking that you may possibly see. So I'm hoping that these kind of recommendations and tips that we review help you feel more comfortable and still keep you on track with your fitness goals. Now, one thing I kind of always recommend to patients is that if you are working on weight loss at this time, it may be a good idea to just kind of focus a little bit more on weight maintenance versus loss just for this um, special holiday time. Now, one thing that can be helpful in reducing calories can be to really just first think about what some of your favorite holiday foods are. So kind of reflect on what those may be for you. And it's important that you still incorporate those into your plate, into your dish. May it be dessert or may it be some kind of special entree. I always tell patients to kind of think about their carbs or their calories like a budget. So for example, you may say I have three carbs allotted per meal and you can think of how to fit that in to how to fit your favorite foods into those three carb budget. So for example, if you love eating mashed potatoes, you may say, okay, I'm going to use my budget on my mashed potatoes and I'm not gonna eat any rolls. That way I can use you know, all my budget on mashed potatoes only, for example. So that way you can still have what you love, right? But you're still being balanced. So that's one way to kind of cut back the carbs, obviously by having the mashed potatoes that you enjoy, but not eating the rolls or buns that you may have. Um, the other thing is, for example, another example is if you love eating ham, which you know is a higher fat meat, to try and reduce the fat and calories in your meal overall, you can try to use, um, try not use things like gravy or high calorie sauces on something else or like your turkey or dressings, for example. So you can have the ham, which you know is higher fat, but you're gonna try and compensate for the extra fat in the ham by reducing it in something else. So kind of just thinking first, what are my favorite things? And I know I wanna incorporate those in, so what can I possibly modify or take out so that I can still enjoy what my favorite is? Another important tip is to make sure that you don't skip meals that day. So sometimes it can be easy for us to think, oh, well, I know I'm gonna eat a really large dinner, for example, so I'm just gonna try and not eat anything for lunch so that I can eat all my calories and all my carbs at dinner time. If you do that, more than likely, this guy eating the spaghetti will end up being you. If you are, if we go a very long period of time without eating, we tend to overeat at that next meal. So it's important that if you that you try and stick with your normal breakfast and lunch and have your, you know, that way you're not as hungry going into dinner. And if you go more than four hours in between a meal, it's a good idea to incorporate a snack as well. And that's gonna help you keep your appetite at bay too. Another thing with those meals that you're having is it's really important to try and add protein in. And the protein is gonna help keep you full for a longer period of time. So that's gonna be beneficial when you sit down and you're not feeling as hungry. And um, that is gonna be also have, well, it's gonna have less of an impact on your blood sugars overall as well. So if you have a continuous glucose monitor or if you check your blood sugar with the finger stick, you'll know that when you have a higher protein meal, 
you don't see as much of a spike in blood sugar. So for example, for breakfast, instead of having something like cereal, which is very, very carb heavy, you can do something like eggs, turkey bacon, and a piece of toast. Okay, that's gonna, that protein in the eggs and the turkey bacon will help keep you full for a longer period of time. So another way to kind of watch those calories is being really conscious of the drinks. Um, it's not that I don't want you to enjoy these special holiday beverages that may be your favorite. It's just that I feel that sometimes we forget how many calories can be in the beverages that we drink. So one of the, one holiday favorite, as you see here in this lovely photo, can be eggnog. So about eight ounces of eggnog is about 340 calories and about 35 grams of carbohydrate. Okay. Now, those of you who do servings exchanges know that's about two carb servings in just one glass of eggnog. And remember, we're still gonna eat on top of the eggnog or whatever other beverage we have. Another good example is five ounces of um, red wine is about 120 calories. Like I said, I don't, I'm not saying we can't enjoy some of these favorite beverages that we may like to have, but just being aware of how much we're having is very important if you're really trying to stay um, on top of your calorie goal or carb goal. So, if you wanted to have a glass of wine, for example, making sure to sip it slowly, being aware how big your pour is, or just having one and then trying to have something else afterwards, for example. So just kind of keeping in mind that reducing the calories in our drinks is a very important and can really make a huge difference depending on what kind of drinks you're selecting. The good thing is there's tons of other drinks that we can have other than just water that can be fun and festive as well. So you'll see here, there's a photo of some bubbly waters. I don't know if you've ever tried that before. There's tons of different flavors. There are, um, there's no calories, no artificial sweeteners. And as you can see in the other photo there, there's tons of other waters like that as well. You have your Canada Dry, there's Dasani. There's a lot of other ones that you can try that are low in calorie. Um, a lot of those also, they don't have artificial sweetener in them. Or if you like a drink with artificial sweetener, that's 100% fine as well. It's completely up to you. You can enjoy these beverages in a fun glass like you would an alcoholic beverage. You can put a lemon or lime in there. You can put a little garnish, some pomegranate seeds, whatever you want to help it to make it seem more festive. You can splash a little bit of juice in there to give it some color if you want. So there's lots of other options to have something fun to drink, but still keep those calories low. Now you can see in this photo that there's a family walking with masks. Um, I know things look different for a lot of us this year, given the pandemic. If you feel comfortable, it would be a good idea to really consider walking with your friends or family, whoever it is that you're spending the holidays with, um, safely, obviously. So you can see this family's wearing their mask, they're going for a walk outside. Going, doing some kind of activity after your meal can really help get your GI system going and can also really help blunt some of that blood sugar spike that you would get from a big meal. Um, so basically, if you have a CGM, one thing I tell patients often is check that CGM before you go for a walk and also check it out when you're done so you can see the difference in your blood sugar. And this can really kind of help motivate you to even get more activity in. If you don't feel comfortable going for a walk, around your neighborhood after you're done eating whatever meal it is that you celebrate the holidays with, consider still getting in that normal activity that you do. May it be some stretching at home, an elliptical at home, anything that you usually do, you still wanna try and make sure you get the activity in to help burn some of those calories that you're gonna be consuming. It doesn't have to be a long walk or anything. 20, 15, 20 minutes is always good, just get something in. My family, I'm originally from Northern California, and my family and I, we always go for a walk after we have our big meal for the holiday time. Um, we, this is kind of a tradition now, so everybody brings their tennis shoes and participates, like 90% of the people usually do. Um, when we first started, it was only a couple of us, but it's a nice way to kind of go outside and still have the time with your family, but we're not sitting in front of the table eating or drinking. So. It's a fun tradition that my family has started doing and it can be something that you start incorporating in as well. 
So I put this clock up here to kind of remind us that it's important if, you, if you're eating your plate, you're, if you're done with your meal and you feel like you're still hungry, you really wanna try and wait about 15 to 20 minutes to give your brain time to register that you're full. It can take up to that long, it can take up to that much time. So if you're done and you feel like you're hungry, I would encourage you to maybe set a little stopwatch on your phone or if you have some kind of smartwatch and nobody will even notice that you have this running and you can kind of give yourself that window of time. And if you still feel hungry after that 15 to 20 minute window, then you can go back and get seconds, but really consider um, getting some of the lower calorie options, which we're gonna talk a little bit more about as well. So that's kind of an important, easy thing to do. You just kind of have to remind yourself to wait a little bit. Another tip that you probably heard before, or maybe you try doing at home, is to try and consume your meal on a smaller plate. So a normal dinner plate's about 11 inches and then a salad plate is usually about seven. So you can see this is the same meal, but the volume of the food is much different. Both plates appear to be full. So you can see that mentally, this is a much different adjustment. A lot of us tend to wanna always fill our plates. So that's kind of where this trick comes into play is that it feeds into that without increasing the calories. So this is just kind of a quick little easy thing that you can try. You may have tried it before as well. Now, something I'm just gonna touch on briefly is called mindful eating. You might have heard of this before. This can be an entire lecture in itself. Mindful eating is kind of like a thought process that now some people are following. And I took just a couple tips from mindful eating to kind of help you keep on track for a holiday time. So mindful eating can help. The point of it generally is to help us become more aware of our thoughts, our feelings, and also physical sensations related to food. Um, and this can help us be more in tune with our hunger and our satiety cues. So that's kind of where mindful eating ideas stem from. Now, I took just like I mentioned a couple tips from there to kind of help that can kind of maybe help. So number one is to eat a little slower. Sometimes when we're talking or with our busy lives, we're used to eating very quickly, but eating slowly really gives you some time to register that you're full and really just enjoy your food um, a little bit more. And making sure to, to chew your food thoroughly is also important, also can help with digestion. And also just taking smaller bites of food that also kind of plays into eating a little bit slower. So these three tips um, kind of play into mindful eating, which can help you just be more aware of what you actually have on your plate and help you keep on track with your goals. Now, some of you may have seen this before. It's similar to my plate. This is actually from the American Diabetes Association. You can see here that half of the plate consists of non-starchy vegetables. Then we have our carbohydrate group and our protein group. So non-starchy vegetables is that group that, I know you've heard of it before, it's gonna be low in calories, low in carbohydrates, higher in fiber. We kind of say it's like a filler food, but a yummy filler food, right? So I listed some here to give you an example and refresh your memory a little bit. It's gonna be food like salad, cucumber, asparagus, cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, Swiss chard, mushrooms. These are all examples of non-starchy vegetables. And remember, you can have these cooked, you can have them fresh, they can be frozen, you can bake them in the oven, saute, however you prefer to prepare them. What I really like about this style of eating is that you're not changing what you're doing, you're just modifying the portions. So you can see half of the plate is non-starchy veggie, so then automatically you're gonna be consuming less of the other two groups, the carb and the protein. So remember the carb group would be things like potatoes or yams or rice or spaghetti, anything like that. And then a protein food would be like meat, chicken, fish, tofu. And then we have our zero calorie drink, which we talked about as well. So kind of keeping this in mind is gonna be good to reduce calories and not just during the holiday time, really all the time. 
is, is, is key. And you can see in this little photo I have here, there's some asparagus, which is non-starchy vegetable, and then there's a beautiful little salad there on the side as well. So not a difficult thing to do, but just kind of remembering that the goal is really to get half of your plate with that to kind of help keep you full. So this kind of transitions. Now you might think, like I mentioned, the holidays are different for us this year for many of us. If you are eating your meal away from home, maybe with friends, family, whoever you spend it with, you might think, well, great, I'm gonna fill my plate with vegetables, but what if there aren't any vegetables? Well, then you make sure that you bring those vegetables as part of your dish. I promise you will not be the only one who eats them. And if you're having your dinner or whatever meal you're having at home, then you make sure that you prepare those vegetables for your family. Make sure that you um, offer that as an option. And like I said, people will eat them. I know you think they won't, but they will. So that transitions me into some recipe ideas. So these recipes, um, these are like some photos that I took from Pinterest. Um, you can go on online and search for fun holiday plat vegetable platter ideas. These were taken from um, Pinterest website. And I've actually made the Christmas tree that you see here. And I have to say everybody loved it and thought it was very nice addition to the holiday appetizers. So these are just, there's obviously like a, a little Christmas tree there. There's a Santa Claus there and there's a holiday wreath. All of the platters, the main star is gonna be the non-starchy vegetable. Okay, so there's cauliflower, those bell peppers, there's all, well, um, there's olives there as well, there's radishes. So you can see that you can still be festive and still, you know, kind of keep on your goal of the non starchy veggies half the plate with something fun like this. So this is kind of a just a quick little easy like recipe idea. And you can always go online if you wanted to be specific about the serving but you just kind of have to try and make it look like a, as you see a little, a little holiday design here. But when I made mine, it was a hit. So I recommend trying one of these. This recipe was taken from the American Diabetes Association website. It's called Better Mashed Potatoes. Now for the next couple of recipes, you'll see, I didn't put the entire recipe down because it would have taken up a long period of time. I just highlighted some pieces from each one. So if you like this recipe idea, you can always go on the American Diabetes Association website and you'll see there's a whole nutrition section there with recipe ideas and you can search for the, that name, Better Mashed Potatoes. Um, you'll notice that this, the photos that I took are the same as well to help make it easier for you to find them if you wanna make these. So this one in particular, I wrote down the, you can see I have the nutrition label on the side. So the way that these mashed potatoes were prepared is there was one potato that was used and the rest was cauliflower. So cauliflower is a great way to, to still have that mashed potato taste and texture, but not have all the carbohydrates associated with mashed potatoes. Now this recipe just used one potato. You can also make it with just cauliflower if you would like. It's up to you, whatever you feel that you and your guests would prefer. So for example, about half of a cup of these better mashed potatoes is seven grams of carbohydrates and 60 calories, okay? Traditionally, about half of a cup of mashed potatoes is 120 calories and 18 grams of carbohydrates, just to kind of give you an example. So this is a good way to still add in your, norm, your some favorite holiday dishes, but reduce the calories. Um, I've made this before. It's fairly simple to do. You just boil the cauliflower head and you smash it up just like you would do with the potato. So this is a pretty easy dish to try and um, might be something that you can start adding into your tradition. Another holiday eating recipe idea is Southern Collard Greens. Like I mentioned, this is also taken from the American Diabetes Association. Um, the same photo was used as well. The ingredients for this are uncooked smoked turkey necks, collard greens, garlic, low sodium chicken broth, onion, and crushed red pepper flakes. So this plays on a traditional collard greens, except for that there is no ham hock or bacon grease, which would obviously reduce the calories dramatically in this particular dish. 
and this could be one of the non-starchy vegetables that you serve. So kind of a, just a twist on collard greens. Okay, another recipe taken from the American Diabetes Association again is high fiber gluten-free brownies. And I just kind of highlighted the ingredients there. You can see that what makes these high fiber is that they have black beans in them. So black beans are gonna provide you with some protein, some iron, some fiber, and it's gonna give you, so it's gonna give you a nutrient punch into brownies, which usually, as you know, are not full of nutrients. They're full of calories usually. So this is a good way to still um, incorporate your favorite in, but kind of give it a healthy twist. It also on the recipe calls for a Splenda sugar blend. You can use whatever you would like. Obviously, if you use regular sugar, that would change the calories a little bit as well. But just kind of a, to keep in mind that you can still have things that you love like brownies, but just with a little twist, you can make them a little bit healthier. Now, another recipe idea, these were not on ADA. These were just kind of um, some things that you can find online. Um, if you type in the Google search engine, cauliflower rice, it will pop up. So cauliflower rice is fairly easy to make and you've probably seen, it's available at the grocery store now and frozen or fresh as well. You just take a cauliflower head, you can put it in a food processor and then you cook it and it, and the texture of it is similar to something that you would have with rice. So cauliflower rice is a great substitute for reg regular rice. You can also make something like fried rice if that's something your family traditionally has for the holiday time. Um, so this can be a good substitute for regular rice. If you're not too keen on this idea, you can always do half like white or brown rice and cauliflower rice mixed together, or you can make that half half mix into a stir fry still a good way to reduce calories and carbs overall but still have something similar to um, a traditional dish that you may have another way to kind of reduce calories and carbs is zucchini noodles some of you may have tried that at, at home as well zucchini noodles you can have you can purchase a spiralizer they're pretty inexpensive they sell them online walmart target has them bed bath and beyond and you can just take your zucchini, you twist it through the spiralizer, and you can see you get these fun shaped noodles, kind of like you would with spaghetti. And when I make these at home, I always cook them and then I drain them after because I notice they release a lot of water just so that the noodles, the spaghetti dish you make isn't watery. So this is a good way to reduce carbs and calories if you do usually have some kind of noodle spaghetti dish with your meal, with your holiday meal. You can see in the photo here as well, in the pan, this particular idea was to incorporate like half zucchini noodles and half of the spaghetti noodles. That way you're still kind of getting both um, the best of both worlds, similar to the cauliflower rice idea. So if you're not too keen to 100% switching over to the zucchini noodles, you can always incorporate some in. And if you have zucchini noodles only, that's a really good non-starchy veggie as well. So these are both kind of just plays on traditional dishes. So let's just do a little recap of what we reviewed today. So one important tip is to try and not skip meals. Okay, remember we talked about keeping on track with your normal eating schedule. If you're going more than four hours in between a meal, you wanna have a snack. And remember that you wanna keep your meals full of protein because that's gonna help keep you full longer to help keep you from overeating whenever you do enjoy that holiday meal. Another thing you can consider doing if you feel comfortable is to consider going for a walk with your friends and family or whoever you're spending the holidays with, of course safely like we showed in that photo with the masks. Or if you don't feel comfortable going for a walk outside, try and do some activity in your home prior or after the meal. Another tip is wait about 15 to 20 minutes before getting a second plate, second serving. Remember that you can set a little timer for yourself on your phone or your smartwatch, and that will kind of help keep you on track. And like I said, nobody will even notice you have that going. Also remembering to try and avoid calorie-filled beverages. Lots of fun low-carb drinks we can try. Um, if you're at home, you probably have those already. If you're going to go to someone else's home, you can make sure to bring those with you. So 
other people can enjoy them as well and they're available to you to select from. Um, another thing we briefly talked about was mindful eating. So overall, just remember to be more mindful and that would entail eating a little slower and trying to enjoy the plate, what's on your plate a little bit more. Another tip we discussed was trying to eat from a smaller plate as well. So remember like a salad plate versus a larger dinner plate. And I would say my favorite idea would be to try and really fill up on those non-starchy vegetables for your meal. That way you can really use your carb or calorie budget for those foods that you really enjoy instead of using them on other foods. So really my goal would be that you would, when you sit down and enjoy the holiday time, that you kind of try and remember some of these and that way you can feel more comfortable with the food choices that you're making. But overall, oh, there's my references. It's important that you enjoy this time, okay? You can still keep on track with your goals and eat healthy at the same time. Like I said, my goal would be that you just incorporate some of those tips in that you found helpful to just kind of help keep your blood sugars at a good level and help us keep on track with our calorie goals. Thank you for listening. I hope that you and your family have a wonderful holiday time and um, stay safe as well. Thank you.